President Zelensky tells us he won't concede territory to Russia in any future peace deal to end the war. He insists doing so would leave Ukraine weaker as a state and give Vladimir Putin cause to want to keep coming back. Meanwhile, one of the Russian leader's staunchest allies, Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus, has told the BBC he'd be willing to allow Russia to launch a fresh ground assault from his country. We'll hear from Steve Rosenberg in the Belarusian capital Minsk in a moment, but first, here's our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, in Kyiv. A year on, President Zelensky may be stressed and deeply tired, but there's a definite spring in his step. Compared with the last time I met him four months ago, he seemed a lot more confident, even though Russia may soon unleash a new onslaught. They're coming from several directions, and we understand it, but we're holding defense. Modern weapons, powerful weapons, when we get them, speed up liberation and peace, because weapons are the only language which Russia understands. The fact is, he knows that his NATO friends are slowly giving him many of the weapons he needs, and he's sure Ukraine can hold out until it's able to launch a major counterattack of its own. So he's certainly not minded to make any concessions to Russia. Any territorial compromises will only weaken our country. Why? It's not about the word compromise. Why would we be afraid of it? We have a million compromises in our lives. They happen every day. The question is, with whom? A compromise with Putin? No, because there's no trust. Dialogue with him? No, because there's no trust. So, no question now of agreeing to let Russia have any part of eastern Ukraine. And, he says, no peace is possible while Russia holds on to Crimea. And meanwhile, looking back, a year ago, would you have thought that you would be sitting here, still president, and the war would still be going on? Today there's already confidence that we will have a positive, victorious result. There's more confidence in that. Now, though, Belarus is threatening to let itself be used by Russian troops for an attack on neighboring Ukraine. And it will be a big mistake for him and for Belarus. It will be a historical mistake. But if Belarus does involve itself with the... We'll with the fight. Can you survive? We'll, we'll fight. We will survive. We will survive, yeah. John Simpson, BBC News, Kiev. More from John a little later, but you heard there President Zelensky responding to the possibility that Belarus could allow Russian troops to launch a new attack on Ukraine from Belarusian soil. A year ago, Alexander Lukashenko granted permission for Russian forces to mass on his border, from where their ground invasion began. Lukashenko is a close ally of Vladimir Putin, but isn't recognized in the West as the legitimate president of Belarus. Well, Steve Rosenberg has more from the capital, Minsk. Few people know Vladimir Putin as well as he does. Alexander Lukashenko, the authoritarian leader of Belarus. He's agreed to take questions about the war in Ukraine and his role in it. One year ago, I say, you let Russia use your country as a staging ground for invading Ukraine. Are you prepared to do that again? I'm ready to provide territory again, but I'm also ready to wage war together with the Russians from the territory of Belarus, but only if anyone, even one soldier, comes to our land from Ukraine to kill my people. A year ago, there wasn't any threat to you from Ukraine. You don't understand the situation very well. The USA and Western Europe pushed Ukraine into this war. Well, they've got the war they wanted. Russian troops in Belarus. These were only exercises, but they make Ukraine nervous. It's watching closely for any sign of Belarus becoming the launchpad 
for another Russian push. Mr Lukashenko enjoys making the Russian troops feel at home. The other thing he does a lot of is accuse the West of fueling this war. If you continue this escalation, you will get nuclear weapons, and Russia has more than anyone. If nuclear war starts, Belarus will cease to exist. So I'm saying we need to stop, we need to sit down at the negotiating table, because nuclear war will wipe out the USA too. He's offering to host Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden in Minsk for talks. The US leader will be in Poland next week. I am inviting President Biden to Belarus. It's not far from Warsaw. 30 minutes and he's here. I will persuade the president of Russia to come too. We will sit down and reach an agreement. That's unlikely to happen. In the eyes of the West, Alexander Lukashenko is very much in Russia's camp, doing the Kremlin's bidding. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Minsk. Well, let's return to our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, who's live in Kyiv. John, lots of speculation there about Belarus getting involved in this war again. What do you think the likelihood of that is? Well, it does sound scary, doesn't it? Uh, but actually, they're pretty much weasel words. As things stand, uh, after all, uh, the, you know, that was facilitated the whole invasion of, uh, of uh, Ukraine in the first place, those lines of tanks, which we all remember so much being shot up by the Ukrainians, all came down uh, through Belarus. And every day or every other day, uh, aircraft are taking off, Russian aircraft are taking off from airfields in Belarus and attacking Ukraine. So all of that is happening. What he's saying is if a single Ukrainian soldier uh, invades uh, Belarusian soil, then we will get involved. Well, that isn't going to happen. You can bet that Ukraine will be really, really careful not to get involved in any way, even though uh, it has to be said the military people here, that, well, that I've spoken to over the months, don't have any real regard for the Belarusian army. It doesn't, uh, it isn't that powerful, it isn't that strong, it isn't that well run. Uh, the chances uh, are, are really pretty minimal that I think that Belarus itself will get involved, but it's territory will be used as it was before and that's something that the ukrainians have really got to worry about okay john many thanks for that john simpson there our world affairs editor live in kiev